Yes. <laughs> My next guest is known as one of the best interviewers in the world of sports. He hosts ESPN's award-winning show, Sports Look. Please welcome Roy Firestone. <laughs> Sports, let's man. do it. Let's do it. Um, let's see. Let's talk about interviews in general that you've sure. done. Is there anybody that ever struck you as being totally different than you expected in the public's perception? I just think that mostly athletes, as a rule, now this is not a generic stereotype, but most of them are physical people. They're not verbal people, mm -hmm. per se. But you get articulate people. And you get people that are, that are able to articulate feelings sometime. Mm -hmm. Willie Stargell was a wonderful guest one time. I asked him, after all these years, Willie, what is it that you know? And he says, I know that truth is life. The essence of truth is the essence of I mean, suddenly started creating almost a poetic effect on our show. There is a lot of heart and a lot of soul in athletes that often isn't articulated. Right. Wow. Um, can we talk Pete Rose? Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think the question is, can Pete Rose talk at this point, <laughs> or will he talk? Um, that really is, is the fundamental issue. By the way, I think we're going to find out this week uh, there's going to be a breaking event regarding Pete Rose, be it the commissioner of baseball is going to uh, be found to allow, be allowed to, to hear the case, or a court will hear the case, or Pete Rose and the commissioner will come up with some sort of plea bargain arrangement, assuming that it is found that he is guilty of uh, gambling. See, the one thing that people misunderstand, the way the press has portrayed it, he is guilty until proven innocent, instead of the other way around. Our mm. country is still innocent until proven guilty. People mm. have the right to have due process in this country. He has not been afforded his due process. Technically, and legally, he is an innocent man, but not the way the press has portrayed it. Right. And no matter what people say, that is still that is still what we're about in this country. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of people talk about the issue as if there would be a difference if he betted against his team or on his team. There's no difference. You know, Arsenio, what it comes down to is if you bet at all, the rule is, baseball's rule, you, you cannot bet on anything regarding baseball for or against your team. If you bet for your team, people say, well, that's supporting your team, isn't it? But it's not, because there's so many different ways to front that bet. If, for example, allegedly, reportedly, he bet $5,000 on, on the Reds, people say, well, that's nothing wrong with that. He's, again, he's endorsing his team, in a sense. He's putting his money where his mouth is. But then there's five different ways you can have another guy bet 50000 against him. And maybe he'd be in on that bet. Maybe he'd bring a pitcher in at a certain time. So if it is found, and this is the other part of it, if it is found, through whatever channels, be it a, a court hearing or a baseball hearing, that he had bet on baseball and his due process was afforded, I think they have to suspend him. But the thing that bothers me most, again, if it's true, is, is, is the arrogance, is the denial constantly over and over and over again. Why can't we at least find a way to, to get Pete Rose the vehicle to find out what, what the story is instead of dredging this up day in and day out? It's dragging it's everybody down. Forever, it's dragging baseball man. down too. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the Hall of Fame in reference to Pete Rose. If he's found guilty, mm -hmm. should that, well, actually, should this whole thing affect him being put into the Hall so of that, Fame? That's another, there's another complexity there. You know, what happens if he bet while he was a player? People say, well, you know, he, what he did on the field shouldn't affect his Hall of Fame, you know, and all, off the field. But if he bet while he was a player, I mean, he was betting while he was on the field. So it's got to be determined whether he bet while he was a player or not. I think that if he bet baseball, they got to think long and hard about, about putting him into the Hall of Fame. I mean, if they're going to deny, uh, you know, a, a guy like, say, Orlando Cepeda, who uh, was involved with a marijuana deal long time ago, uh, Orlando Cepeda is very worthy of being in the Hall of Fame. When you bet on baseball, which is a heinous crime, if it's found to be true, uh, they got to think about denying on that on that level. I think I think it's going to be a very thorny issue. I don't think we're going to hear the end of it for some time. I just hope that this week it comes to a head. Yeah. Uh, I was watching uh, one of the local sportscasters here in Los Angeles, Fred Rogan. Mm -hmm. He was uh, doing an entire Rogan's Hall of Shame mm -hmm. on. Uh, Star Spangled Banners, National Anthems. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
What is up, man? Let me tell you something about the national anthem. The reason sporting events take so long is because the national anthems take so long. It's not, it's not the events themselves, mm -hmm. it's the singers singing the national anthem. No singers. <laughs> no, am I right about that? Now let me give you an example. I have a, I have, I have a little quick routine that I would like to, let's start with when, when, when Johnny Mathis sings the national mm -hmm. anthem. It takes longer than the game itself. Um, <laughs> Michael, we could, we could just maybe get a chord here like, oh, 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 oh. Oh, say, can you see my arms early? Look at me. So it takes too long. All the legs are going, come on, let's go already. Let's get you know. <laughs> Then you get, now, they try other people. Try to mellow out the crowd a little bit. Right? Right. By the way, Mike, thanks for helping us out there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> how about like Gordon Lightfoot? <laughs> Gordon Lightfoot. Now the folk singer, the problem with the folk, it takes forever than to tune the guitar, right? <laughs> so Gordon Lightfoot takes his guitar out, starts strumming. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gordon Lightfoot sings our national anthem. <laughs> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light <laughs> The rockets red glare, the bumper thing, you know. The whole thing. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. The songs kind of sound the same. Uh -huh. And you have like Neil Diamond. He sang a great national anthem. You just remember the Super Bowl, the Giants, and, the, and I think the Denver Broncos here at Pasadena? I missed that one. He gets out there, they have the 101st Airborne flying over. I would have gone to war for Neil Diamond right then. <laughs> he comes out there and, he, and it's pretty bombastic. You know, he's playing at the Forum here, so he's really a very electric performer. He comes out, he goes, Jose, can you see? By the dawn's of the light. <laughs> and, and then he goes, I mean, it's his big moment. And it's like, it's like his big moment. It's like, oh, America. And then he goes, crunchy granola, sweet. You know, just lost a lot. <laughs> lost a lot at the very end. I thought. We'll take a commercial. We'll come right back with Roy Firestone. <laughs> Ultimate crowd. Oh, yeah. Um, let's talk about Mike Tyson. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> See, automatically, right off the bat, you get, you get a response. This guy, you talk about a kinetic athlete, a man that's very compelling. Remember the, remember the first time you heard him speak, Mike Tyson? <laughs> what, what was your observation about, about, about Mike Tyson, the fighter, and, and the, the man who speaks? He always gets mad at me, and I'm just afraid one day he's going to hit me. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I was like, this man swings like Reggie Jackson and talks like Michael Jackson. Right, right. <laughs> That's right, because I, I, want, I see a fight and Marv Alpert's calling it. It's a thrilling thing. A left, a right, oh, another left, oh, it's a devastating knockout. Mike Tyson, the champion of the world. Mike, what's your reaction? Can I tell you something? I'm, you know, extremely excited. <laughs> We, did, we, just did, we just did an hour special that's going to be on the second week in, mm -hmm. uh, in July called The Portrait of the People's Champion. And it's a different side of Mike Tyson. Is it going to be on ESPN? No, it's going to be all over the country, syndicated. Okay. It'll be okay. on the uh, 15th here in Los Angeles. It'll be seen all over the country. Scott mm -hmm. Sternberg producing it along with myself. And the thing that strikes me about Mike Tyson is he is so soft-spoken. And he is a very humble guy. And, and has so many things about him that people don't. And the people love the controversy. Jose Torres just did a, bit, a very controversial piece in Playboy yeah. about the sordid side of Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson says in this show that he can be a jerk sometimes, that he has a lot of skeletons in his closet, but so do we all. But the thing that isn't said about Mike Tyson, and he doesn't even want to say particularly, is the work that he's done for charity. Mm -hmm. He's helped raise uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in cities like Cleveland, Chicago, and New York for the homeless helped contribute out of pocket $25,000 for the Sugar Ray Youth Foundation. Mm -hmm. Did a program, and this is a wonderful piece in the show, Kenny Rankin did a song about it, uh, with, called the YAI, the Youth Athletic uh, Institute, Youth Adult Institute, for retarded kids. Mm -hmm. And he, you see him with these kids hugging and holding them and help raise thousands of dollars to find 
homes and shelters for retarded kids. You don't see that in the newspapers. Right. And that's something that has to be told. If you're going to talk about all the negatives, let's start talking about some of the positive things because he has made contributions. On a lighter, on a lighter note, I was talking to Mike about uh, the first time I. Do you remember the time, first time you saw him fight? Oh man, it was scary. I was at the, I was the fifth row at the Felt Forum in New York, and you know how sometimes the referee gets in between the two fighters just before the fight, and they start staring each other down. And sometimes the fighters like to talk to each other, try to intimidate. And I see Mike Tyson lean over. He's a young guy, he's about 19. Lean over to his opponent, said, "Tonight I'm gonna beat the hell out of you." <laughs> to which the other guy looks at Tyson and swear he goes, "I know." <laughs> <laughs> kind of reminded me that when I had Michael Spinks on the show, the mm -hmm. week before the fight, that fight lasted 91 seconds. You, yeah. you saw the fight. Yeah. And I knew that there was kind of an indication that Michael Spinks might be in a little bit of trouble. Sometimes you find out in the interview, and I said, Michael, are you concerned about the way in? He said, no, man, I'm concerned about the way out. So I knew <laughs> right then and there. You know, but... I, I, uh, Mike Tyson, whether this stuff is true or false, what I admire is the man has some skeletons and he's honest. Sure. So often people in the limelight will give us a lot of bullshit, right? And make us think that there's something that they're not. The man said, that's me. Can I tell you something that else? That was me that, then. Something this that was said in this show that I thought took a lot of guts. The end, I, you know, all these athletes invariably, I talked to him about heroes, because he is 23 years old. Mm -hmm. He's worth about $150 million, maybe $200 million yes. down the road. But here's, here's a guy, I said, well, do you represent hero to America's youth. He goes, no, man, I only represent me. Hello. He said, I don't, I'm not telling anybody to be like me. Be the best you can be as a human being. Hello. Don't look at me as a hero. <laughs> he said, he said, in this show, he said, be, be your own hero and get on with your life. And I thought that took a lot of guts to say that. People getting on this whole high horse about mm -hmm. how great they're. He said, I, he even said he didn't think he was an athlete on the show. He said, Flo Jo is an athlete. He yeah. says, I don't consider myself. He couldn't shoot a basketball worth a damn, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> he had air balls all over the place. We're, we're human beings, you that's know? Right. That's right. And uh, that's the bottom line. I think so. Roy Firestone. <laughs>